Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're gonna to be having a look at a tool called Crowdin. Uh, Crowdin is a localization tool that helps you manage your translations. Uh, and that's whether you know, you're doing all your translations in-house, like a small company, or if you wanna you know, do enterprise and you wanna outsource your translations, or even if you wanna crowdsource your translations, uh, Crowdin basically handles all of that for you. Uh, for full transparency, Crowdin did reach out to me to, to make this video. Um, but as with all my videos, I, I have full control over everything I, I kind of say and, and do here. So it'll just be like any other one of my videos. So um, yeah. Yeah, let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with, you know, asking the question, what is the problem? As you should always do when you're kind of bringing in a tool, um, why do you need to bring in Crowdin at all? So we're gonna have a look at that and then we're gonna do a demo of, of Crowdin itself. We're gonna start off with an application from a tutorial that I've done previously uh, and I'll leave links to the to the video for this and to the GitHub repository. Very small application uh, using uh, IE10N and using React to localize an application. So here's the code here. Uh, you know, barely 50, 60 lines. And all this does is you have a drop down. you can just basically change from French to English. Uh, it's kind of got a bit of a counter, it's got some tags, et cetera, uh, just showing off the, the i18 uh, end feature. So we're gonna start off with this application and we're just gonna modify it slightly to, to, to basically prepare it for, for crowding and then we're gonna do the, the demo. And like I said, we wanna ask the question, you know, why do we need crowding at all? Well, you can see in this application, we, we're using i18n and we have our translations um, inside inside the, 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 the component itself. And of course we can take these translations outside into their own files, but then the, the, the question then becomes, is this a scalable solution? You know, how do you actually manage the translations here? How do you send them to, you know, whoever is translating them? How do you bring in uh, external uh, third party folk to, to, to help you out with the translations, how do you charge for it, how do you add members, how do you proofread it, anything and everything around basically managing the whole kind of ecosystem of uh, sending, receiving, updating translations in the app. Uh, that is the, the, the basically the, the, the big problem we have here, that's the question, and that is the one that Crowdin hopefully helps us solve. So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, update this application very slightly because uh, it's been a while since uh, I've worked on it, some of the dependencies are out of date. So I've updated the dependencies and I also just need to update um, a couple of the, the keys here. So um, instead of having this uh, singular changed and then changed plural, they've changed it. So I'm going to basically change it to changed one, changed other, same with the text below here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in uh, what's called an HTTP backend for this i18n library. Uh, again, you don't need to know too much about this. Uh, if you wanna learn more, I'd recommend checking out the other video, but we're just gonna basically set this up to, for the for the crowd and demo. So I'm gonna add in this backend, which is basically allows us to fetch translations from an HTTP um, endpoint. Then we just use the HTTP backend with our i18 configuration. And then instead of referencing these kind of local uh, objects here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, actually fetch, you know, use a backend and actually fetch the uh, the translations from a static directory called slash translation slash, and then uh, insert the, this is the two letter code language dot JSON. So if I save that, we can basically remove these guys. What I should do is I'll keep this one here, this object. Um, so remove these guys. And I'm just gonna go over to the root of our project and uh, I'm gonna create a file called uh, public translations slash, uh, I'm gonna call this en.json. Um, and this is a, this is just a, a simple Vite uh, app. This is just how I scaffolded my app. So anything that's in the public folder is gonna be served statically. And we're just gonna paste the, the JSON there. And of course that's gonna expect to, to be um, double quoted, just like that. I'm just gonna remove that comma there. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy that file, right? So fr.json as well. And we're gonna keep the English for now. So the scenario that I'm, I'm gonna start off with is, you know, you have the English text, you've just brought in i18n, uh, and now you wanna add languages. So the very first languages we're adding in is French, basically, because we already have the English text. Uh, so we've added the French, but we don't know the translation, so I'm gonna keep them English for now, just so that the app works. You can see the app, if I just uh, refresh this guy. Uh, there we go. So the app still works, but of course, you know, we'd like the French translation. So the the the, the basically the, the source is coming from the developer. The developer here is adding the, the new language. Later on, we're gonna see how a product owner or a designer might add a new language as well and you know how it all integrates. So um, now that I've got this code, I'm just gonna push this up. So I've already got this all uh, committed. Uh, I'm gonna push this up onto a branch called Crowdin. Uh, there we go. So if I head over to my uh, GitHub repo on the right-hand side here, um, head over to YouTube tutorials, we should see a new branch called Crowdin. And this is basically the branch that we're gonna use uh, for the demo. So I'm gonna head over to Crowdin now, uh, crowdin.com. And I've already created an account and I'll just create a, a free account so you can just get started for free. Um, so I'm just gonna go over to the, the profile here. And when you're on the page, you basically start off with either creating or joining a project. So I did mention earlier on that Crowdin supports crowdsourcing. Um, 
basically translations for any applications or games. So we can actually just hit explore and translate and essentially see what other uh, open source applications there have been translated. And if you scroll down, you can see a few popular ones. So one of the big ones, Minecraft. Um, there's other things like you know GitLab, you know Postgres, the Node.js documentation. There's a few things here that you can jump in. You can see how many users have contributed to this this language and um, uh, well this application. And you can see all the different languages that are being translated for this uh, for the specific game, and you can go and do the translations, etc. So this is the the kind of the crowdsourcing, uh, the open source version. Of course, you have a bunch of uh, private ones as well, which we won't be able to see here, and that's the one that we're going to create here. But that's just an interesting uh, interesting thing to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own project here. And I'm going to call this um, Crowdin. Uh, it's going to call it Crowdin Tutorial. Actually, it's going to be a private project. Like I said, it's not going to be public. We need to determine the, the source language. For us, it's going to be English. It's that en.json file. And we know that right now um, we want to translate into French. So we know we have one, basically one uh, language that we uh, we want to translate to. And then we're just going to hit Create, create Project here. So this is essentially the, the homepage for Crowdin. You can see there's a, a few things going on here, um, and we're going to go. Uh, overall then basically but what we're going to do is we're just going to follow the workflow of an actual translation process and by doing so we'll, we'll hit into basically all the different uh, tabs here and everything that you need to see so the very first thing there's a uh, quite useful tips up here um, at the top in, in yellow and this is basically saying hey you know you need some files to translate and of course we can upload files if it's just one-off things we can just upload them send them away but we don't want to do that we want to actually integrate it with our you know our git integration we want to make sure you know it's it's uh, coming in via pull request you know, getting merged in, we can review, you know, do the whole review process. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go over to um, set up integration here. And when you go to integration, you can see there's a few different integrations. We're going to be looking at GitHub, but there's, there's plenty of different ones out here. Um, and there's also uh, a marketplace uh, resources. Uh, here we go, marketplace. And if you scroll down the marketplace here, you can see the, the number of different integrations. So there's plenty of different tools, uh, etc., cetera, to, to go on. But for us, we're just going to stick with uh, GitHub. So I'm going to click into GitHub. I'm gonna set up an integration. So this is the integrations tab, by the way. This is the first one earlier on, we're on the homepage, now we're in the integrations tab. And then it's gonna ask you to authorize your GitHub. So I'm just gonna do that and it'll direct me back to uh, back to Crowdin. Great, so my GitHub has now been uh, authorized. So I'm just gonna select the repository. So I'm just gonna go over to tutorials. So that's the repository I wanna do. And here you basically wanna select the branches that you wanna work off of. So I can explicitly select a branch. In this case, I'm gonna just choose Crowdin because that's the one I'm, I'm working with. Um, and you can also at the bottom set which branches to basically sync with automatically. So anything with, you know, star translate, uh, and that just happens automatically. I'm not gonna do that for the purpose of this demo, but that's just there if you need it. Um, and you can see on the right-hand side here, what it's saying here is this is the service branch. This is the branch that Crowdin is gonna create uh, and it's gonna use to basically uh, raise pull requests into the, the main branch here. So I'm just gonna keep the names all default and I'm gonna go into this uh, pencil here. I'm gonna edit the configuration of this branch. So I'm just gonna click continue. And basically what I'm gonna do is you wanna add a file filter. So you need to tell Crowdin what files you want to translate and where you want them to, to basically place the files, right? So we know that we want to go slash, uh, I want to go Crowdin tutorial, and then I want to go into, I think it was public slash translations. And in my case, you can kind of put in wildcards, etc. In my case, I just want to do the one file. The enjson file is basically, and you can just open that up so you can just see uh, a little preview. This is the file that I want to translate. I don't want to translate any other files. And then the other side of it is, well, where do you want to put the, you know, where do you want to put the translations when we come up with the French translations? So I go over to translated files and it's already suggesting kind of a, a, a path here. And if you click on this little eye icon, you can see a bunch of, um, a bunch of placeholders you can add. So for me, I want to put it into the exact same uh, path. So I'm just going to copy this original path slash original path. And then I want the um, two letters code here, uh, .json, just like that. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna put it in Crowdin public translations, fr json. So I'm gonna have en, fr, and any other languages I have. And that basically works perfectly with my workflow. If you've got a different workflow, you just uh, add it here. So I'm just gonna save this guy and you can see, um, there we go, we've got our file filter. So I'm just gonna hit save down here. And then you have a few other options here. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I'm gonna leave it all blank. Um, but the main one here is, uh, I'm just gonna click the, the drop down on how to handle duplicates. And this is basically, if you're dealing with multiple branches uh, and some of the branches might have the same keys that have already been translated in other branches, how do you how do you handle that basically? So I'm just gonna let Crowd and handle it for me and just say, just hide any duplicates. Um, we only wanna solve them in one place. Uh, you can explicitly set how to, uh, if, if you want Crowdin to, to push uh, all the changes and you can set a sync schedule. So of course you might not want to sync it every minute because you might 
take you know hours or days to 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 get translations. I'm going to keep this all defaults because there is a sync now button which I'm going to be using to just uh, automatically sync. But you can again change this to to suit your needs. So I'm just going to hit save, and what we should basically see is our branch uh, syncing at the bottom here. Cool. So now that I've added to my integration, I'm just going to go back to basically my home page. Oops, I've gone out there. So I'm just going to go back onto the home page, uh, and again you can see another nice little notification there. It's lonely in here. So we can now, at this point, we can either invite people to help with the translations or we can actually just buy professional translations. So if I, if I just click here, buy professional translations, it's gonna take me to the tasks tab here. So the task is exactly what it sounds like. You create a task to basically translate um, a certain number of uh, words uh, in a certain number of languages. And then you can assign that tasks to people. You can uh, send it externally, you can keep it internal. In this case, you can see here, I'm, I'm selecting translate by vendor. Um, because I'm on a free account, I have the option of just doing the crowding. So crowding have um, relationships with their own uh, uh, translation houses and they can basically handle all this for you. Uh, and then you just basically pick the strings, pick the branches that you want to translate. And you can see here um, prices. This is an approximate total of how much it's going to cost to translate all my all my strings. And then you can just go ahead with this process. You know, you might get a call from uh, you know crowding and uh, one of the representatives might chat to you and you guys can basically sort out exactly how, how you want to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that for now. You can also invite people, like I said, but again, um, it's lonely here. I'm going to keep it lonely and I'm just going to translate all the um, all the strings myself. So I'm going to go over back to the, the homepage. Uh, I'm going to click into French because that's the only language that we have. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click all the way down. Um, so this basically shows you the files that you want to translate. So Ian Jason, that's the file I want to translate. And this is going to take you to some sort of uh, editor, right? So this is kind of a, an assisted uh, tool to help you uh, handle your translations. So you can see all the keys on the left-hand side. So these are all the, the strings that we have. So there's basically four pieces of text. Um, and then on the right-hand side here is where you can add comments. You know, sometimes you need a bit more context when you're translating. So you might say, hey, not sure, um, you know, exactly what this means, etc." You can add comments, you can add discussions with different uh, different people that are part of the project. And in the middle bit is basically where you actually do the translation. So you can see the, the string, the source string here. The context uh, is the key. So welcome is the key. You might add things like the, you know, the, the page that it's on. Uh, you might have some sort of hierarchy depending on, on where you work. Um, and then you basically just, the, a translator will just come in here and just add a translation. And the cool thing here is at the bottom, we can see a bunch of suggestions, right? And these suggestions come from different places. Um, you can see TM and MT suggestions. So TM is basically the, the translation's memory. Uh, and that's basically any translations that you've done before in the past. If you've got you know large projects, etc., um, it's going to suggest them again. Uh, and then there's also uh, machine translation suggestions. So that's just automatic suggestions. And there's also things like uh, global suggestions. So if you're on a public uh, uh, if you're on a public account and you know you've I think you've contributed to the the global um, memory, then you get suggestions from other projects that are also globally you know uh, uh, available. So here are all the suggestions. Um, you can see I've done one uh, a few days ago. So if I hit uh, this one here, Bienvenue, that's fine. So I'm going to save that one. Uh, I'm going to go through and basically um, yeah I'm going to go through and just basically select the top one and, and translate all of these. Cool. So now I've reached the end of the file. One thing to note as well that you can see that. Um, uh, Crowdin recognizes when you have kind of variables and, and tags, etc. So it highlights them a bit differently. And Crowdin has its own solutions uh, on how to handle plurals, etc. I don't need it in this project because I've already done it with uh, I18N, but that's all available um, within Crowdin. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to quit the editor. So I've translated the files. Um, you know, they're all done. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to head over to the uh, the main page here. I'm just going to see that 100% French. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to click into our uh, GitHub repo because you know the, the whole point of this is that it's an integration. And we're going to head over to pull requests. And you can see there's no pull request now. Uh, and that's because uh, my integration hasn't been sync. I think I, I set it to the one hour sync cycle. So I'm just going to go over to GitHub and I'm just going to explicitly put in sync now. Again, if you have the timing, it's going to sync every wherever it is. I think for me, it's every hour. So you can just see that it's uploading the translations. It's creating the pull request. If I head over to the pull request now, just hit refresh. What we should see is a pull request from Crowdin. And this is coming from the, the branch that they created, the service branch, coming into my Crowdin branch. And if you look at the files that have changed, you can see that they've updated the fr.json um, with the text that I've just translated. So now we can review this, you know, we can either get back to the translations or just merge it, you know, bring it in. Uh, and that's you know, that's basically the way that is. So Right now, we've shown the flow where a developer starts off uh, adding a translation, but there's other scenarios um, at times where you have the product owner or a designer um, or anyone basically uh, adding either new keys or new translations. Uh, you know, and there's plugins for things like Figma and uh, you know other design tools, etc. So you know, that's that's very kind of a common thing to do. Um, and how do you do that? Well, we're going to go back into the Home tab and we're just going to select languages. And let's say we want to add 
um, Italian. We're just going to click Italian here, update. You can see Italian is at 0%. But again, um, if I go and sync now, leave that for a moment and then come back to my uh, uh, GitHub repo. And if I refresh this guy now, we can see that there's two translations. There's the Italian one and the FR Italian, of course, starts off, it's just a duplicate of the EN JSON. But you can see now, uh, uh, you know, from crowding, we can actually add uh, translation. So, you know, if there's different workflow in terms of development and uh, requirements coming in from the product owner, or whatever, it doesn't matter where it comes from. Eventually, it all comes into to Git, all comes in as a pull request, and that's kind of you know that's that's pretty powerful stuff. Um, and I think that's everything I wanted to cover. There's there's one final thing uh, that I'll just direct you. There's something called um, crowding in context, which is uh, basically an integration with your application, and it gives you the translations like it says in context. So one of the hardest things about translations is not knowing the exact context. And when you're translating something, whether it's a kind of a UI context, which is, you know, does this string fit in the, you know, in the page in the space, or um, is the word that I'm meaning in whatever language referring to the same word and the same use. Um, and it's hard to know that without context, even though we've got the key. So what crowd in context does is basically sits on top of your application. So this is the crowd in website and you have crowd in context tool integrated with this. So you can just basically um, add translations directly into here. So uh, another product, you can see that you can, you know, see that it works. You can see it in context. And, you know, I think this is kind of a, a, a very safe way to do translations because it's almost, you know, it's almost impossible to get it wrong because you've got the full context of the application uh, and everything around it. So um, yeah, if you're, if you're really kind of risk averse uh, in terms of your translations, this is, uh, this is something that you want. And um, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Now, of course, Crowdin offers a lot more uh, than what I've just shown here for the kind of the, the minimal um, workflow and you know, for applications I've worked on, this is going to be absolutely fine. But of course it, it scales up to, to, you know, whatever, whatever your team's needs are. And uh, yeah, so uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I shall see you in the next one.